Good morning, everybody. Let everybody kind of come on. I did not even take the time this morning to open up my computer. I got people going in every which way. So it's a busy, 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 busy Friday morning. So I'm going to kind of let a few people pop on. Hey, Addison, can you let me know if you can hear me okay? As well, just give me a thumbs up if, if you can hear me okay. I am, let me adjust the camera here. Okay, thank you, Addison. Okay, so this morning's topic, this morning's topic, you know, are you settling for clean socks, I think is what I titled it. Are you settling for clean socks? And good morning, Shannon. Can't hear anything. Shannon can't hear anything. All right. Addison, you can hear me? Yes? Because somebody else is saying that they can't hear me. So I need to make sure that my volume is okay. Let me know. Can you guys hear me okay? Kidding. Oh, okay. <laughs> I take you seriously. Okay. 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 Good morning. Okay. You're making me panic there. I'm like, I got the volume up. I don't know what else to do. Technical difficulties. I don't know how to fix it. I need a man. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve. Good morning. Okay. Um, so yeah. So are you settling for clean socks? That's the topic of the day. And, you know, I was, I was up late last night and I'm trying to launch three courses in the next week and a half. And I've had a lot of technical difficulties. So, right. Yeah. I'm like the universe is testing me. The universe is testing me. Um, but one of the things that I was, that I've been working on is, two courses one course that is all about feeling good and how that helps us create the life that we want and another course that is going to be called it's that freaking simple and and it is that freaking simple and here's the thing so and why i'm why i'm sharing i'm not trying to sell a course right so it's like i'm just sharing is because those two titles together come back to the clean socks. So, you know, I, one of the things anybody who knows me or who has ever worked with me and Addison could definitely say this, I, I am, I'm, I all the time ask people, what do you want? 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 What do you desire? You know? And that statement right there stirs so much up for different people. Some people they can't think of anything that they want. Some people, you know, can list a million and one things, but don't believe that they can have any of it. Some people will state something very clearly and with great heart that they want. And here's what, where I'm going with this. It's, we often look at our life and we do this in our relationship. We do this with our work. We do this, you know, we, we do it with our houses, with our, with our cars, with our health. Um, and anything that we have desires or needs or wants wrapped around, we tend to settle in to what we perceive as good enough. Well, it's good enough. It's not 100%, but it's good enough. It's 40%, 50%, 60%, you know, 70%. Woo, it's 80% of what I want. It's good enough. And that's kind of like saying, you know, I want this incredible, and I'm going to pick on relationships. So I want this incredible relationship. And, and I have this, you know, it's not about what necessarily what the person looks like. It's about how the relationship makes me feel. And this relationship makes me feel 
connected. It makes me feel happy. There's lots of laughter and adventure, you know, like I would put in there, somebody who wants to travel, somebody who's free, got their own time schedule because, you know, that's my, I, I work on my own time schedule. You know? It's like somebody who has this kind of stuff. Somebody who would accept my children as almost as their own, you know, but it'd be a good, a good partner, a good parent, all this kind of stuff. So as we're looking at that spectrum in relationship and we're putting that out there, then what if, what if somebody comes along and presents their great parents, they're really a cool person, they're, you know, they're very connected, they're this, they're that, but they don't have, they hate travel. Like that would be a major no, no for me. So they hate they hate travel. Let's just say that. They hate travel. Travel scares them to death. And I go, well, but you know, this person has seven out of 12 major things that I really am looking for. So what's the answer here? Do I settle? Do I settle? Do I settle for the clean socks? Because it's like, well, I, I have, I have kind of like, you know, I have, really great stuff over here. I got seven out of 12 things. Why not just, it, travel's not that big of a deal. I mean, I could talk myself out of it, right? I could talk myself out of one of my major desires in life. I could, and, and try to make a situation work for me versus saying, no, really great person, really awesome. This is, this is blah, 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 blah. And we could get a lot from each other. And maybe we do for a time frame. And maybe things kind of change. But remaining open to the possibility that my true desire is out there. That it's not just about the clean socks. It's not about the settling. That what wants us, what we want, wants us too. Okay? And that's the whole concept here. of So many times. And, and here's what I see. And it's keeping it on relationship wise, I see a lot, a lot, this very, very sad statistics actually. And I've said this in articles and I've said this in different talks and interviews and workshops and over and over again, I have couples that come in and I would say that out of all the couples that I've seen, which has been a lot of couples in the last 10 years, I would say that. 80% of the couples that I see should no longer be together. And they are trying to force the situation to stay the way it is out of the fear of change, the fear of having that discomfort, the fear of potentially, you know, not succeeding in having what they actually desire. And they settle in and they'll start letting go of their dreams, their desires, their passions, they let they step away from themselves in so many ways. They start to make excuses and they go, well, I have clean socks. I have, you know, I have a dinner when I come home. Dinner's on the table. The house is clean. We, we go to the movies twice a month. We do this. We do that. Good morning, Michael. You know, it's, it's all good. It's all good. And if you ask those people, are you passionate about your partner? Are you passionate about life? Do you feel like you're moving forward? Like you're being, like you're growing, you're expanding, you're being challenged, you're going deeper in, in the relationship with self, the relationship with your partner. Do you feel like there's, there's still more to explore? And the majority of them would just be like, huh? No, we're content. We're happy. It's all good. It's good enough. It's good enough. Is that what you want? Good enough? You want a job that's just good enough? You want a, a relationship that's just good enough? You want, you want that lifestyle that's just good enough? You want just existing to pay the bills, existing for the weekends, existing for the five o'clock hours somewhere in the world to go hang out at your local watering hole and, and kick back and have a, have a drink so that you can just, 
get by and, and let go of the stresses of the day, you know, decompress a little bit, is just hanging out and doing the same routine day in, day out, on the weekends, every Friday night you do this, every Saturday. It's about cleaning your house and getting things put together and maybe settling down and doing something as a family, like going and watching a movie or something. And suddenly you get up and you go to the same church service and you do this and you do that. And boom, 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 boom. Are you settling for clean socks? Because that's clean socks. That's clean socks. It's like, woo, I have clean socks. I just did a bunch of laundry yesterday. Like I have lots of clean socks in my house. Everybody has clean socks. Everybody's happy that they have clean socks. Now, if I told them, I said, well, Better enjoy this clean socks because you know how mom said that in July we're going to Maui and we're going to go spend two weeks in Maui or maybe three weeks in Maui and we're just going to go and we're going to explore and we're going to go hang out. And I've just decided that we don't need to go and have that adventure. It's just better if we hang out here and just, you're happy with your clean socks. So, you know, that's all that really matters. It's, we'll clean your bedroom and, and I'll be that with that. And, you know, and life is good. Life is good. Sounds kind of, yeah, like. That's a really shitty trade right there. But it's not, I'm not trying to say don't be happy with what you have. Because one of the tricks to getting more of what you want is to be in gratitude for what you have. But if you're in such gratitude for what you have and even, and that you have reached a point of complacency, a point of very comfortable in what you have and in the existence of and that you're not wanting more you're not feeling like more is possible you are not having these inner desires rise up then your soul is dying your soul is dying we are desire based creatures we are designed to desire to want to crave more and we live in this world where we have done everything in our power to take the discomfort of the desire, no matter where it sits, away from us. We fear desire. And we fear desire with good reason. I mean, desire can eat us up. Desire can destroy us. Desire can cause addiction. Desire can take us down the wrong path and push us into the wrong things and make us do crazy shit. <coughs> That's desire unchecked. That's desire that is stemming a lot from, from ego. That's desire that is not based in heart, based in divine connection with God, the universe. That's really unhealthy desire. But even within every single unhealthy desire there is a root of the positive desire for the for the wanting of something more the wanting of greatness your soul calling out and saying dang it i can have more i do deserve more i do want this i do want that go to the core go to the core i really encourage you today you know here it is friday and we're moving into we're moving into the weekend and we're moving into this time of really, you know, like a lot of people I know have their weekend routines. Why is it a routine? Why are you allowing your weekend, these two days that could be beautiful adventure days, beautiful creation days, beautiful days of connection, why are you allowing them to just get washed away with clean sock activities? Or no activities why are you allowing those two days to like are you gonna to get to Monday and look back at your weekend and go yeah I don't even know really what I did don't even know really what I did I, I had every intent to maybe do this or this or this I had every intent to catch up I had every intent to work on that project to to you know read that book, to listen to that audio series, to go and explore here or there, 
to connect with these people. I had every t intent to work on that side project that's going to get me out of this job that I don't like. I had every intent of, of you know, exploring and checking out what the options around this or that was. But instead, I, I don't know. Like, I weather wasn't bad, so I went to the park, I did this, ran to the grocery store, caught up on my laundry. All of that stuff, that's, that stuff that eats away our energy, eats away at our time, and washes over us and masks our true needs and desires is stealing the breath right out of your lungs every single time you allow yourself to get eaten up by it and carried away to the point that it's like you just have amnesia on Monday and you're dreading the week because it's Monday and you're dreading the week. If you're dreading Monday, if you're not totally turned on to what's happening for that for that day and for the rest of the week and for the excitement and the direction that you're going, then that is your soul saying, I need air. I need air. Feed me. Which means look at the things that you're settling for. Look at the things that you're settling for. Now granted, I've kept this on a very physical, materialistic level today as to what those desires are. What are you settling for emotionally? What are you settling for spiritually? What are you settling for in your relationship to anything or anyone in your life? And really question, really, really question, is this just all about clean socks? Am I happy with clean socks? Or am I open to, to the possibilities that are out there? Am I open to the possibilities that there is more for me and that I do deserve more and that I can have more? And if time and money wasn't in the question, what are the top five things that I really would like to experience in this lifetime? If time and money wasn't in the question and I could... If I could, you know, create the life that I want, what would my Monday morning look like? What would my weekend look like? Now, you might go off on this crazy-ass tangent and say that, you know, you want to jump on an airplane and you're going to go off to Paris and have lunch there on Saturday morning and, you know, spend the night in Italy and da -da 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 do all this stuff. Bring it back to something realistic. Because for 98% of us, that's probably not a realistic thing in this moment. And if it's not realistic, if it's not something that you can actually really buy into and believe, then you're, then you're going to boycott it at your core, okay? Because it's not in alignment to your beliefs. So go big and then bring it down, okay, to something that you can actually believe, that you can actually wrap your mind and your heart around, and find something in there that you could act that you could really do tonight, tomorrow, Sunday, that's going to bring you into a better state of desire, a better state of tasting something new, and not letting yourself really get caught up in just eh, white so you know, clean socks. You're getting caught up in clean socks. Look at every routine, and if you're just settling for the clean socks, ask yourself, what else could I do to bring into my day something that's not just about settling for clean socks because clean socks are killing your soul. They're killing your soul. Just keep it keep it simple like that, okay? So, yeah. Everybody got really quiet. Nobody's saying anything. I see a bunch of people on, and nobody's saying anything. So... I guess that's the topic of the day. I guess it's going to be short and sweet this morning. I don't know. Um, so yeah, just, I don't even know if I have a, let me see if I have a quote. I had a whole bunch of quotes over here. Let me see if I got anything. Ah, Simon Weil. The danger is that the soul should persuade itself that it is not hungry. Simon Weil said, the danger is that the soul should persuade itself that is not hungry. 
recovering our true heart's desire may involve facing some very deep disappointments. And, you know, and it's going to require much like, much like I'm talking about, you know, it's getting out of that, that comfortable state of just allowing things to be normal, allowing things to be average and ordinary. It's a painful self-examination <coughs> of really getting in there and realizing that you are settling. You are settling. And what does that mean? And it gets it's uncomfortable and it's nasty and it's dark. But you go and you dig in there and underneath that darkness, underneath that pain, you're going to find the beauty of your heart's desire. And as you tap into the beauty of your heart's desire, you're going to find this birthing of, of something else, which is your spirit inside of you, right? That spirit, that light, that desire, that belief, all the stuff that's there that, you know, that the craving of, of having the life that you, that you really do want. And here's the thing, you might paint this humongous picture. Like I said, you know, jumping on a plane, having lunch in Paris, spending the night in Italy, blah, blah, blah. The majority of people, we might say something extreme like that, but that's not really our true desire. It's not really a, even a true desire at all. When it comes down to it, we want so many, you want things that you want. I want things that I want. And the majority of the things that we want are about feeling good and being connected and be out being happy and not having the burden of this or that on us constantly about really just being able to be ourselves and experience life. And those things Typically, you can discover the majority of them really, really close. You can, you can have examples that you can experience right now, in this moment, today, tomorrow, Sunday. Things that you can experience like that that's going to give you these feelings inside. And that's what we're doing it all for. Everything that we do is for the feeling. How does it make you feel and when I say are you settling are you settling for clean socks how does that make you feel how does that make you feel and what do you really want in life are you are you actually just selling your soul the idea that it's not hungry or are you going to get comfortable with the concept that you are hungry and that you can feed that hunger in a healthy way Ask yourself those questions today. Um, I'm probably going to pop on later. It is Frank Friday, I guess. I'm trying to do a little bit more video content. I kind of fell off my video bandwagon over the last two, two and a half months. I was really on a run there and then I had a whole bunch of other stuff happen. And I'm trying to get back on, on a schedule of having some, some consistent videos coming out. So on my schedule, Frank Friday, that just means I don't know what the heck I'm talking about. It's kind of like conscious coffee, except it's probably going to be some baseball bat concept. I have no idea. It's like, go out there and do that. And I have some really cool announcements later today. So definitely check on the page. Um, or if you see me going live or something, I'm announcing some really cool stuff. I kind of gave you guys a little in on it. You know, about the um, Feel Good Now course. And the it's that freaking simple course. But Addison, Bell, and I are also doing a retreat in the summer down to the Texas Hill Country, a woman's retreat. So I'm going to be doing a private announcement on that just to give everybody a whole bunch of information. So you're going to see me popping on and off all day with a whole bunch of different stuff and courses launching this weekend as well for people to sign up for. So Lots of cool movement, lots of cool stuff as we enter a new Chinese New Year. We just had the new moon yesterday. So there's like this moon for people who are following the moon cycle. There's a whole new birthing of, you know, a newness out there um, for people who are excited about the Chinese New Year. Well, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. We are now in the year of the Earth Dog, I believe. Um, 
so that's coming up. And for people who just don't give a rat's rear end about any of that stuff, well, it's Friday. It is Friday and we are moving into a new day as the sun comes up for those of us who are sitting here at 6 a.m. and still have a dark sky. Others, maybe you're going to bed. Maybe you're going to be starting a fresh new day of Saturday soon, or maybe you already have. But every single moment is a new moment, and just embrace it. Embrace it and look for where you're settling and where you're not settling, and what you your heart's desire truly is in any moment out there. Okay, and I will catch you guys um, outside of little things that are popping up throughout the next couple days. I will see you for 6 a.m. Conscious Coffee on Monday, and I should be here all week next week. I don't have any trips or anything going next week, focusing in on getting a whole bunch of stuff launched. So see you every day next week around 6 o'clock in the morning for Conscious Coffee. Okay, have a fantastic Friday, everybody. Bye.